Hi, I'm Matt Collins from Krotos. You're listening to the Sound Architect podcast. Hello, and welcome to the Sound Architect podcast. I am your host, Sam Hughes, and today I am joined by Matt Collins. Thanks for joining me today, Matt. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to have you back. So you're general manager at Krotos, the creators of Dehumanizer, Igniter, Reformer, Weaponizer, and also Concept, which is actually what we're about to talk about today. So what does a general manager actually do? I'm curious about that first. I do a lot of general things. You do a lot of general managing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a very good question. Um, yeah, I do lots and lots of different things. So um, I do things from yeah, strategic planning and things we do as a company and why we choose to do them um, down to um, product management and product prototyping. Um, my main job throughout the years has been yeah, prototyping and um, managing the development technical side of the company and what we make, basically. So business, business, business is what it sounds like to me. Well, yes and no. I mean, like I, I still find the role actually really creative. So, you know, it will it'll, it'll, it'll often start off as, you know, we think this is an interesting idea or someone suggests, oh, you know, wouldn't it be good if this type of thing existed? So I will then go off and do a bunch of research and speak to a lot of people in the field about what they're doing, how they're doing and how they're doing it and why. Um, and then start actually prototyping sort of solutions to that in things like Max MSP in dialogue with our other developers and designers and you know people that we work with um and you know it's basically like coming up with a creative solution to a problem basically i mean the whole krotos mo is always that we want to try and solve problems or help people work with sound in a different way um so we're always trying to come up with creative solutions to problems basically so there's a lot of creativity involved in the work as well yeah i mean you have very creative products to be honest because i mean all of them pretty much are kind of reactive real-time um, sound software right so everything's almost done in real time and you basically get to i mean um dehumanizer for example is like real time vocal processing uh, which you can also use for pretty much anything like whatever you input basically can't you yeah i mean always the one of the approaches of the company and our approach to design has been yeah keeping everything performative mm. and you know in audio software that really means keeping it real time and keeping it as um, intuitive as possible because you know if you're doing a performance of something you don't want to suddenly have to stop halfway through and figure out how the hell am I going to do something yeah um, it, it should always be you know the the solution should be at your fingertips at all times yeah um, and then we try and make that sort of remit as broad as possible but historically we've always tried to solve a, a particular problem like the humanizer was made to try and make creature vocal design easier faster more enjoyable um Weaponizer, the same for weapons. Igniter, the same for engines. And Reformer, the same for, um, well, that's a bit more wider remit, but how you interact with pre-recorded sound. Yeah. And I'm curious as well, because one of my favorite things is when people use something in a really bizarre or unique way that it wasn't quite intended for, but it's still really, really cool. So what's the most creative use of any of your software that you've seen? Uh, oh, I don't know. That's a tough question. Um. Yeah, I mean, people are always telling us about things that they did that we didn't expect them to do. I remember someone sending me a video that they'd made with Weaponizer, which was like a sort of hulking robot full of pneumatic recordings and sorts of stuff like that. Oh, cool. um, someone had used Igniter for actually creating risers for music or for trailers huh. um, because they found they could control it using a loop engine in a very particular way. I suppose you can rev it up, yeah. And I was talking to Craig Hennigan, who does all the... Um, well, many, many things, but one of the things he's done recently was all the, the sound design on um, uh, Stranger Things. And he was saying how that he used to human, he always has dehumanizer like out and hooked up to a mic that he has ready. And he was, he started by recording some creature effects by putting a rec his ironing board through that microphone <laughs> um, into dehumanizer, which Amazing. is always quite funny. That's awesome. And yeah, you've got an insanely good amount of credits um, related to Krotos, haven't you? You've there been quite some big. Big stuff, including Stranger Things, obviously. Yeah, I mean, we've been used like all over the industry in posting games. I mean, pretty much anyone you can think of in terms of game studios owns our stuff or uses it in some capacity. And yeah, Stranger Things, Game of Thrones, um, the Avengers, Jungle Book, things like this, though, have been the sort of clear touchstones for us. But people email us all the time, being like, "Oh, I, you know, I'm using it on this, or I'm, I am doing this project, and I'm, I'm doing this, or I want to achieve this. How do you think?" you can help and that sort of stuff so it's um it's an exciting position to be in yeah definitely so let's dive into concept then 
Before I ask any more questions on it, why don't you give us a, a brief overview about what it is and what it does? Yeah, so Concept is um, our first sort of music-focused product. Um, it's a subtractive synthesizer. Um, and basically what we wanted to do was make um, a soft synth that was a little bit different, um, that really simplified the way of working with sound simpl and simplified working with modulation, um, but also had the sort of Krotos twist of some unusual ways of working with sound. So it has... Um, an interesting built-in um, audio input module that allows you to basically modulate anything within a synth from any audio input, with, sorry, any audio source within your door. So you can feed things like kick drums, snares, other bass lines or other melodies into the synth as a source of modulation. Um, there's a very really interesting um, feature called XY Capture that allows you to just capture a movement of your mouse of an X in the XY pad. Um, and use that as a modulation source, which is one of my personal favorite features of it. Nice, yeah, um, that's pretty cool. And um, there's another system in there called Tweak It, which is a really nice sort of controlled randomization system where you can um, randomize particular parameters within particular ranges. So you might have a preset that you like or something from the factory presets. Um, you feel like it needs to change a little bit in a, in a certain direction. You can quite easily sort of direct that randomization and just sort of shake things up and find new ways of getting inspiration basically nice and you can set the boundaries that it does within that so it doesn't go too crazy yeah exactly and and it's up to you to assign parameters to it as well so unlike most randomization systems that just randomize everything by a random amount yeah you can really dial it in and, okay, and cool. sort of control the amount of change which is a really cool feature that people really like nice so how did the idea first arise? You can see how I avoided a very obvious pun there. Oh, don't worry. You won't be able to avoid them all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so how did, the, how did the idea first arise? Um, well, it came out of uh, the end of um, Igniter, actually. Igniter has actually a really powerful inbuilt synth system inside it as one of its many tabs. Nice. And it, that's really mainly used for sci-fi vehicles and electric vehicles, which is uh, a really popular use of that plugin. Yeah. And um, we were looking at that and thinking of, you know, you know, wow, we've actually, we could actually make a make a synth out of this. Um, that would be an interesting challenge for us because we'd never really done that before. Um, and it would give us a chance to make um, a product for a different collection of users which, that we'd never really done before. So it was, uh, uh, you know, having a new challenge for us. Um, and yeah, and trying to take some of the approaches that we've made in post-production games and apply those to the music market, really. Okay, nice. And... You know, it's it's quite reasonably priced to be honest. It's it's ninety nine quid, isn't it? It's not it's not like one of the kind of like higher end prices. So it's it's quite reasonable. Yeah, it's very affordable. It's very very accessible. Everything about the plugin is that we're trying to make it accessible. We're trying to um, make it you know clear what's going on, make it quick and easy to work with, make it quick and easy to access as well. Awesome. And what do you think some of the potential uses of this are that people might not realise at first glance? Um, I think it's it's one of these great quick products to work with if you if you if you're actually just looking for like a like a simple classic synth sound you can get that really easily and then you can take that really to another dimension also really easily using some of the the modulation options and one of the nice things about that is that it's always visible what's going on particularly with modulation so you know even as i would class myself as a fairly advanced synthesizer user but even in other products with when you have sort of in-depth modulation matrices and stuff it's actually very difficult to find out what's going on sometimes yeah um in a complex patch or a factory patch and you know those those type of systems they have their place but as also as a, just a general user i find it very frustrating when i can't figure out you know what's going on so i can adjust it to get what i have in my head yeah you know, we all, we're always trying to find a way that people can get what they want in their head quickly so um i think as a product it really excels at that and it excels in you know shaking up designs and, and getting different variations really quickly in the same way that lots of our other products do. And you provide quite a few factory presets. How did you first kind of design what to have as presets? I mean, it's not just a synthesizer, is it? So how do you decide how you set those? Um, well, we wanted to address a lot of the, the sort of common things that you would find in any soft synth. So, you know, you've got bases, pads, leads, all type of stuff. Um, but there's also like a lot of really interesting sort of sound design presets that we've made ourselves and other preset designers have made for us for our existing customers, people who want to make things for posts and games and tv but yeah i mean a lot of the stuff is just driven from you know the inspiration that came through the plugin itself from the system we put together and what it's capable of and i was always you know surprised at how quickly i could make something that i found really interesting and exciting and kind of unusual as well as something that was really straight up and 
you know you would kind of just make things through through that direction as well um and a lot of it came together really quickly it's it's a really really easy fast um since to work with it's it's really really fun cool and how long has it been out now it came out quite recently didn't it uh it came out actually uh back in january so it's been out nearly six months now oh wow time has gone here's me going recently in it and i'm like yeah january sounds recent when you said it and then when i thought about it i was like oh god yeah it's it's june next week so <laughs> yeah i mean yeah it's crazy i mean I, I yeah it does not feel like that long ago that we released it but it was uh mid-january just before nam um <laughs> and uh it was, yeah it was fun to go to nam it's my first time there we've been before oh, nice. my first time personally and uh we won an award there actually oh congratulations uh, from sonic state the um synth um website we they awarded us the best plug-in award up there which is really cool oh fantastic not too shabby for uh, such a young product as well <laughs> not too bad no not too bad no. so um i'm assuming as with most soft synths you can create your own patches and save a lot of presets you know what's kind of the limitations with how much you can save and keep and and kind of modify your own settings yeah i mean you can modify as much as you want um you can also you know modulate as much as you want i don't think we actually have really any limits on modulation amounts or sources or that sort of stuff so you can go you know totally simple or totally bananas however deep down the um, rabbit hole you want to go um it's also really fun modulating modulators with it yeah um because if you've got one modulator open you can just drag a parameter to another in the, that central modulation section which is really easy um and because of the use of colors you can really easily see if another modulator is being modulated by another modulator because of the use of color yeah so that's really quick and easy and you can go down the rabbit hole really quickly but it's always it's like understandable to see what's going on which i think was a is a really cool thing that people seem to really like about the product yeah nice um what would you like to see people do with concept what what would you want to see out there i mean obviously it's a fresh software um one of the things that it's uh, really exciting, as we said before, is the, the use that people figure out later on. So it's only been out four months at the moment, nearly five. Have you seen any kind of novel uses with it already? Or is there a potential you've seen that you're like, oh, cool, I wonder where this will go? Yeah, I mean, I've seen some cool things online of people using particularly the audio input, being excited by that um, and seeing what you can do with that. It, it's, a, it's a cool plugin for that reason that you can use it, you know, really in, in synergy with the rest of your track, which I think is actually really unusual. Um, what I'd love to see is, yeah, maybe a, a big artist use it in that way to discover, you know, the things that the plugin can do it might unlock sort of creative potential in a, in a, in a big track thing. That would be extremely rewarding. But yeah, I mean, we like, like all our products, we keep finding people telling us interesting things that they're doing and unusual things that they're doing with it. Um, and I find that myself, even when I get a chance to use it myself. Okay. Awesome. And what, what would you say is the biggest, I mean, I, I know it's a, a horrible phrase to use, but what do you say is the biggest selling point? of concept what is it that you notice that other things don't do that you think will really stand out as why people would want to use concept over another soft synth for example it, the strength of it is its simplicity because it's it's direct to do simple things but you can also do complex things and you can always track what's going on you can make a huge range of sounds um, and interact with with it in an unusual way because of the unique modulators that we've got in there so yeah, its strength is its directness, its simplicity, but also that it allows you to go deep, but always allows you to come out of the black hole again really easily if you want to. Nice. Well, you wouldn't want to stay in the black hole, I suppose. Well, hopefully not, no. <laughs> <laughs> we won't be seeing you again if you do. Exactly. Yeah. Lost forever into concept. So you're a musician yourself, aren't you? Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's my background and I still do music as well. Yeah. Nice. Have you used concept for any of your own music at all? Yeah, I have. I use it quite a lot, actually. Oh, nice. Which is good. <laughs> That's uh, a good sign. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I even I even used it the other day. Actually, when I was doing something, I had I have I was using another plugin to lay this, laid something down, and I wanted to do a bass line, and I knew exactly what I wanted to do with the shape and the modulation of the bass, and I just used the X Y capture to do that, and it was really really easy. And yeah, then I just got on with the rest of the track, which I think is the best the best compliment you can give about a tool that it does its job it gets out of the way and lets you get on with your creative vision yeah i didn't really think about it just used it <laughs> yeah exactly i mean it's kind of you know um subtle in that way but that's what all tools should do is just basically become transparent and i assume it's not just mouse movement can you attach you know analog joysticks to the xy capture yeah i mean anything that um you can assign midi to you can do it um you can just use the MIDI support from your door. So, for instance, I use Ableton for all my own music, and it's very straightforward to to assign things to it. And yeah, anything that you can um, throw MIDI into will uh, yeah, you be able to hook up to it, which is really cool. Now, this might be a harder question to answer, but what would you critically say is the only limitations 
of concept. So people are aware of like, you know, the range, like we've heard of what it can do. What would you say is the one thing to bear in mind? You know, if you are going to use it, what would you say? Well, bear in mind that it, it does do a lot of this. However, this is the only drawback. Yeah, sure. I mean, um, the strength of it is its clarity and its simplicity. Um, that by definition means that you don't have every option under the sun available to you all the time. Yeah. So you could de you could view that as a weakness. Um, I don't view it as a weakness personally. I think it's actually quite nice that you know you're you're limiting yourself. I mean, a lot of, a lot of creativity actually comes from having limited um, resources at your fingertips. So that's one thing. Um, but yeah, we, yeah, there are you know we have two oscillators. Some some synths will have many more or many other types of manipulating the oscillator. Uh, and also with filters, we only have one filter. You can stack other filters in the effects rack. Um, but all this stuff we will will be looking on to expand in some way based on feedback from people as well. And we're already working on some some exciting additions to to concept as well that will be un unleashed in the next couple of months. Ah, nice. Well, that was going to be my next question because there's going to be more, isn't there? This isn't just the only concept. There is more, more, there more, more concepts, to concept than yes. you think. There are many concepts <laughs> that we could explore in this direction. I hope there's some pun-related additional packs coming out. Well, I mean, I would be lying if I said there weren't more pun-related things coming. <laughs> yes, um, excellent. Because it's that just too hard happy. not to do the puns. I mean, you've just got to give in and accept the pun, right? Basically, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, you can't fight against... A good pun. You've it's got to true. Go with it. A good pun is just too strong. Exactly. What can you tell us about what's coming though? Is there any hints or anything you can give us? Um, there are some visual things and some <laughs> sonic things. Um, there are some new ways of approaching what we've got as well, which I think are exciting. Um, that's about as much as I can say. This is fun. I might ask you more vague questions because it's really funny hearing you dance around the subjects as best as you can. <laughs> I mean, it's usually good to do this after a few beers, as you and I have many times as well. Exactly, yeah. I should take you down the pub and then I'll, then I'll know. Well, we'll have to wait quite a while for that at this rate, unfortunately. Actually, yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah, sorry, I'll have to airmail you some beer. I'll order you some beer off yes, Amazon. do that. And, and, then <laughs> and then at some point... Make you drink it while I interview you. And there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and is it just concept stuff that's coming from Krotos soon, or is there some more newbies? Well, we've we've always got lots of stuff in the pipeline. I can't can't really say too much, but of course, it was worth a shot, though, right? Well, yeah, of course, yeah. Um, but yeah, as always, we're we're working on lots of exciting things that we look forward to sharing with people that will hopefully blow people's brains <laughs> in the nicest way, in the, in a good way, in a good way. Yeah. So I was going to ask, as I always ask, about events that you'll be going to. Mm. However, of course, due to the current situation, that makes things slightly tricky. So are you attending any online events? Are you doing any presentations? Is there anything cool coming up? Um, well, we've actually been doing um, a whole series of webinars of Krotos products, actually, um, via our YouTube channel. Ah, of course, yes. The last month or so, basically since the kind of coronavirus um, lockdown began, we started doing that. Um, and those are all available um, to watch again on our YouTube channel. Those are really, really good. Um, I highly recommend those if you're maybe new to our stuff or you want to know more about it. Um, Mihao and Andrew, our sound designers, have walked through some really exciting examples of our stuff. And um, we should hopefully be continuing that series like during this time as a kind of opportunity to to share and to, you know, keep in contact with um, with our users. But obviously, yeah, the um, events thing right now is a little tricky, um, but the, <laughs> just a bit, the next yeah. opportunity, we would love to come out and meet everyone in the community again and, you know, go to the shows. Yeah, awesome. Well, that's all the questions I have about concepts, but I, I do kind of want to ask about the current situation for, for you and the team as well. How has it been and how is it currently working with uh, with everyone at Krotos? Is it is it remote, I assume, at the moment? Yeah, so everyone is is remote. Everyone's working from home. Uh, that, I mean, the transition, I think, went for us pretty smoothly, actually. We, you know, we just, we sort of saw the lockdown coming and moved everyone remote. I think we were maybe a couple of days ahead of the official announcement, but it's all been really fine, actually. Um, we've already, we've always had remote staff. It's not a stranger to any of us, but um, it took a little getting get a little getting used to. But I personally was a little surprised at how easily easy it's actually been. Um, it's incredible what what you can achieve with technology these days. I mean, not only have I done you know my general 
um, day-to-day work, but I've done, you know, a, a live stream with Audio Kinetic for their channel, including me sharing, you know, audio in real time over the, over the net, demonstrating Igniter live for Wise. I've done two podcast interviews, one video, one audio, and various other things as well. So it's, you know, business as usual, really. Yeah, I guess for uh, the modern times, with a, we're very, very fortunate to have the connection and uh, and kind of equipment that we have. Yeah, we are. I mean, I think if it happened 10 years ago, it would have been very different. But <laughs> yes, it's, cra- it's crazy, really, like how easy a lot of it actually is. And I think it will really make people think a lot about how they work and how organizations work with their employees, because it kind of proves the point that not everyone has to be physically located in the same place. It's like as long as you're on the same time zone and with a good internet connection you can you know achieve incredible things so i think it will change quite a lot of people's perspectives excellent and do you think it's changed yours and krotos's as well will it change the way you work moving forward uh i think it's changed mine i mean i had already i i had <laughs> never goes back to the <laughs> office that's matt gone from <laughs> i um i had started to do a little bit more work from home 90 percent of my work was in the office and you know i do miss that you also like i miss you know going just a change of scene and change of scenery and you know i miss you can say pub it's okay well yeah that's it Um, (laughs) but yeah just a day-to-day thing about you know not seeing your co-workers and people that you do spend a lot of time with but yeah i mean i think i'll probably work a little more from home i think and maybe some of my colleagues will as well um but we'll see yeah i think it's pretty much the same story for all of us well i have to say matt it's been an absolute pleasure and it's been really fun learning about concept i'm actually looking forward to trying it out as well yeah thanks i look forward to uh hearing your thoughts about it as well oh i'm pretty sure i'll have quite a few yeah <laughs> yeah well yeah i mean everyone can just go to the the website yeah crotosaudio.com slash concept and you can pick up a free demo and uh, the demo is actually it's not using iLock or anything and the demo never expires. You can just have it on your machine and it runs for 15 minutes at a time before it shuts off. But you can just add the plugin again and get started again if you want to learn some more. Okay, perfect. Well, we'll pop a link below. And thanks again, Matt, for joining me today. It's been an absolute pleasure. And thank you everyone for listening. Stay home and stay safe. Thanks very much.